We receive understanding. We receive illumination. We receive light. Thank you for your faithfulness in our lives. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. All right. So this is October, and then um, we'll be having a new series, all right, in October, except for the, I think, Thursday when we are looking at the gifts of the Spirit, which will still continue from what we were studying in September. And then the Saturdays of um, October, we're going to be looking at the gems for marital bliss, all right? There are gems that once you have them, you'll have bliss in marriage, okay? And um, we know some of them, but we just need to hear them again. Some of them uh, may be new to us, you know, as we study, but quite a number of them we already know. And we just need to hear them again, hear them from a new light, hear them from a new understanding. Let God um, pour forth you know illumination to your heart concerning them all right so we receive light and revelation lord as we study in jesus name and today the first gem which we all know is love okay but let's look at it from how god is placing it before us what exactly is supposed to be love between husband and wife let's go to ephesians in chapter 5 and um i'm going to read from verse 20 and i have a long read so you follow me giving thanks always for all things unto god and the father in the name of our lord jesus christ right giving thanks thanksgiving is very important in every home that's why thanksgiving you know building the, the system of thanksgiving is so powerful because when you thank god it allows gratitude to rise in your heart i've told those that i have one medication all right for depression or sadness sadness deep sadness that leads to depression or depression itself give thanks to god all right every hour for 10 days every hour you are awake set an alarm and just give thanks show appreciation if you can get your music just for one or two three minutes every hour give thanks if you do it for 10 days it will break something in the realm of your soul because when you are grateful to god it causes your spirit to ascend and then God's presence and all the forces of God also come closer to you. All right. You know, I was listening, I was hearing um, C.C. Wine as one of these um, excerpts, extracts or what they call it, you know, these short cuts that they get out of messages. And she was saying that the Bible said God inhabits the praise of his people. He said, so you want God to show up, just praise him. He's going to show up because he inhabits your praise. So if you praise him, it will show up. So giving thanks, we must encourage it. All right? We must learn to give thanks. When we travel and we come back, my wife will make sure we give thanks when we get home. Ah, she will not let that go. She will say, yeah, let's thank God that we went and came back safely. Because it's good to give thanks. It is good to give thanks to God. So, um... Verse 21 says, submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. So submission is actually supposed to be mutual. All right. That's where it started from. Then verse 22, wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church. And he is the savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject to unto Christ, so let men that so let wives be to their own husbands in everything. Now he's not saying submit to every man, he's saying submit to your own husband. Husbands, verse 25, husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. So we're supposed to love as Christ, not love as whatever, or love as your grandfather, or love as your father. If your father loved as Christ, yes, it's a good role model. But if he didn't love like Christ, then he's not a model for you at all. So we're supposed to love as Christ. The way Christ loved the church, that's where you're supposed to love your wife. That he might sanctify, it. so he gave himself for it, that he may sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. 
And he that loveth his wife loveth himself, for no man ever yet ate his own flesh, but nourishes. The word nourishing is very important. Nourish it and cherish it, even as Christ, even as the Lord the church, sorry, even as the Lord the church. For we are members of his body, of his flesh and of his bones. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother, and shall be joined unto his wife, and the two shall be one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. Ha. Verse 33, nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife. <laughs> don't, don't go and love somebody else's wife. Love your own wife. Love his wife even as himself and the wife see that she reverence her husband. All right. So this is... Um, this chapter, yes, is teaching about marriage, but it's actually teaching about how to really love in the marriage. You know, that's, that's what he's teaching. So some of the instructions he was given were the things to do to actually express love. All right? I'll read the devotion and then I'll do some explaining. Marriage is an institution created by the Almighty God himself for the expression of what he wants. All right? for our good and for the expression of what he wants to give us an idea you know the bible says let me read it in romans in chapter number one there's a very powerful statement there that we must never ever let leave us because it expresses something that is very powerful about god i'll read the 18 19 and 20. Romans 1, he said, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all unrighteousness, all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness, because that which may be known of God is manifest in them. For God has showed it unto them. What may be manifest of God is already showed to men. It's already in them. The law is written in the heart of everyone, even if they don't have any law. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Meaning, whatever you want to know about God, if you look at the things he has made, he has put some evidences there or things that can explain even his eternity, his eternal dimension can be explained from things that are seen. If you just look around, you'll see the things that are seen, that explain. They, they explain to us how they would give birth to us. How do they do it? He said, they, except the kind of wheat falls to the ground and die, it abides alone. But if it dies, it multiplies. So that seed planting and getting harvest is an expression of how God multiplies how God gives birth so if God wants to give birth God has to fall to the ground and die and then he multiplies so we can see from things that are created why did God make the four cherub that are around his throne the ones that replace Lucifer the four cherub why did he make them to have four faces? Face of man, face of lion, face of ox, face of eagle. Then, after he did that, he now made some animals to look exactly like what those uh, uh, cherubim had. You understand? Why would he do that? Because so that when we see the angels, we'll understand what the face of lion is, what the face of the ox is, what the face of the eagle is. And we already see our face there in the font. So we, we will be able to understand when we see those animals. And we now see what is showing us in the spirit. We can say, okay, the eagle is speaking of wisdom, is speaking of sight vision and all that the lion is speaking of kingship and all that the ox is speaking of power the face of man is talking about fellowship and intimacy with god you know those things are clearly explained so when you are very close to god because this cherub 
the Bible said to Lucifer was the act cherub that covered. It was the only cherub that provided covering. All right, for the seat of God. You know, God told Moses to put two cherubs to cover this mercy seat to, with their wings to cover the mercy seat. There are four in heaven. And before these four, there was only Lucifer. All right. But after Lucifer fell, God placed these four there. And these four had four faces. The, those faces are expressing the dimensions of God because they are close. So when you come close to God, you are going to manifest those four dimensions. The face of God, which is the intimate relationship with God. You know, you begin to manifest his presence. That's why we confess and manifest God's presence. Because when they see your face, that's the face of God. That's the presence of God. Then the, the lion, which is kingship, you know, in another dimension, is character. You manifest God's character. The ox, which speaks of strength, you manifest God's power. And then wisdom, which is the ego, you manifest God's wisdom. All right? So these things are expressing God. In the same way, marriage expresses what God wants on earth. And so what God wants with man, the kind of relationship he wants with us, that's what marriage explains. That's what marriage explains. And that's why he said, I speak of a mystery concerning Christ and the church. So he created it because he wanted a family. So he created the male and the female to express the intimate relationship he wants with each of his family members. So the relationship between the, ma the family as a whole is an expression of what God wants. That's what God wants, family. The three of them, he said, no, 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 no. We have to have family. We need to have children, many of them. So an expression of that is what God created. Man, woman, having children, family. That's what God wants. That's why you have God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. If he didn't want family, it would be God the master, God the servant, God the Holy Spirit. That's what it will be. Because we'll all be servants. You know, all human beings are servants. They are subjects of God. But we are children. So the second person of the God was made son. Because they wanted to multiply sons. They wanted to have children. That's why. That's why. So God wants family. That's why he formed his family. So your family is supposed to express that intent of God. And the only way you're going to express that intent of God is by going to the blueprint. What the, how did he say the home should operate? All right? Then the relationship of the father with each of the children is the relationship between the man and the woman. That's why he said the relationship of the man and the woman is the relationship of Christ and the church. Christ is the husband of the church. Not as a male to a female, no, but as a lover to the loved. Because the male and female part, that's where you have sex and all that stuff coming in. But if you remove the male, that I'm a male, my wife is a female, you understand? If you remove that, what will be left? That's why sometimes we, we, we should understand that sex is not all about it. Sex is part of it. Sex is important in the physical for us, but it's not all. It goes beyond that. It goes beyond that. Because when we when, 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 when it comes to Christ and the church, you are not having sex with Christ. Otherwise, I mean, if I'm a male and Christ is a male, that means we are homosexuals. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? But Christ is my husband. My, my husband, not as a male to a, a, a male or a male to a female. No, my husband as per the lover to the loved. That's what it is. And that's what God wants us to understand. The intimate relationship between you and God. That's why I like what Rick Warren said. He said, the first thing that God wants you to do is to accept his love. Oh, I said, wow, that's beautiful. You can't love God until you accept his love. You can't. And you can't even love people like God wants you to love them until you accept the love of God. It's difficult to give what you have never received. That's it. You can't give it. You have to, people have, I mean, and I can tell you this, many Christians have not accepted the law of God. Many. Children of God. They are born again, yes, but they have not accepted the law. The way they live and live their life and behave, you know, they, they don't believe that God loves them. 
Are you getting what I'm saying? That song, all my life you have been faithful. Very powerful words in there. He said, all my life you have kept me. From the moment I wake up till I lay my head down, you have been there. You have just showed up. I like, I like you know, those words are very deep. Because you have to accept the love of God if you are going to be able to give love. You can't give quality love if you have not accepted the love of God. So he is the lover you are the loved. You understand? I'm trying to remember one other song that says, uh, um, I, I'm going to remember it a long way, but that is what we are seeing here. He's the lover, we are the loved. And the same way is supposed to be between the husband and the wife. The husband should be the lover, the wife should be the loved. And then in the role of the wife, the wife should be the lover, the husband should be the loved. That's what he wants there in our relationship. Let me read on here so we can quickly finish this. He then multiplied the humans. So go on a family. So he created male and female to express the intimate relationship he wants with each member of his family. He made and he made multiplication of humans, you know, on earth tied to the copulation of uh, male and female, thus forming families. The intimate relationship between the male and the female is supposed to ex express in the human dimension and the new creation dimension, the intimate relationship between Christ, the representative of God the Father, and the church representative of each one of us. So that relationship between the male and female is supposed to express the relationship between the father and each of his child. The relationship between the male and the female is supposed to mirror the relationship between Christ and the church. So Christ and church is the closest, but Christ is representing the father, the church is representing you. All right. So when we look at that relationship between Christ and the church, you are seeing what you are supposed to, where you, the, your relationship with the Father. You are seeing it. Every time you see the Bible talked about Christ and the church, you have to consider that Christ is representing the Father, the church is representing you. So what you are supposed to be to the Father is what Christ is, 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 is to the church. And what Christ is supposed to be to the church is what the Father is to you. You get that? Christ is the husband of the church. Not as male to female, but as lover to the loved. The revelation of how to love by giving, caring, nourishing, protecting, building, manifesting is what every male needs. So, we now come to what is it? How, how do I really love? He said, you should love as Christ loved the church. How did he love the church? He gave himself for it. He gave himself for it. Christ died for the church. What is that saying? That is saying a man should learn to be the giving force in the home. He must learn to do that. He must learn to give. Giving is very, that's why we say this very clearly. When it comes to love, it's about giving. And about receiving. Not demanding. What most of us are doing is we are demanding. We go there, you know, to collect as tax collectors. Receiving is different because receiving is by faith. You give and then you expect to receive. All right? Your faith reaches out to God to receive. And then you receive because it's freely given to you. But when you are a collector, you go to demand it. You go to force it to happen. You manipulate all kind of, you do all kind of manipulation to make it happen. So you can collect what, it, what you want. But when you're a true giver, you wait for faith to deliver. Because faith will deliver what people will willingly give. That's what faith will deliver. Alright? What God gives, that's what faith will deliver. So, that's what it's supposed to be. The man is supposed to learn to give to the wife. He is supposed to learn to nourish. Nourish means to take care of. To make sure this person is getting better and better. Not to manipulate, not to turn her to what you want her to be, but to help her to be all God wants her to be. That's what it's supposed to be. Nourishing, protecting. You have to protect. Protecting. Building. You have to build. 
In fact, when I was writing this thing, I, this was coming out of my mind. I had to be judging myself. I won't lie to you. I had to start rating myself, saying, okay, how much have I nourished my wife? How much have I built her? How much have I protected her? You know, I kept, I kept checking. You understand? I won't tell you my scores, but I, I, I need, there's some areas I need to work on. Now, it's important because when we look at the standard, it tells us to improve. When you, the standard is human beings or people, your friend, your colleague, your uncle, all those people are not standards, though, except they are doing like Christ. Christ is the standard. Because when you look at the standard, you will see where you need to improve. And you will have the help for improvement. Christ is not the standard that is set before you and you, it's impossible and in, 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 totally impossible to be what he sets before you. No. That's the law. The law does that. The law sets a standard before you that is impossible to meet. And then you are judged and condemned at the end of the day. Do you understand? But Christ is a standard that provides ability within us to be what the standard he has set before us is. That, that's the kind of standard that Christ is. That's why the moment Christ says something and you believe it, and you believe it can be it, the ability rises in you towards it. That's what Christ is. And Christ does that. So a man is supposed to do that. That's what it means to love that woman. Yeah, we have some other details about love language and all that stuff, but primarily the baseline, give, nourish, build, protect, Protect, care for. That's love. That you're supposed to give as a man. Then the revelation of how to respond to love by loving back through submission, yieldedness, and loyalty is what the female need to embrace. And that's the same thing. How does it, how, how does it, how does God expect the female to give her own love? Submission, yieldedness, loyalty. All right. Yes. Yes. It's, it's something that is given. And we must understand this. Don't demand. Don't collect. Receive. Receive is different. Receive is like this. Receive looks to God to have. And God makes what is going to deliver what you need. To come so you receive it. Collector goes to make it happen himself, manipulates, brings pain to make it happen. So a man will make sure the wife is not working, will stifle the funds she's given her to force her to submit. You understand? And that's, that's, that's not submission. That's forced submission. Submission is supposed to be a gift she gives you. If she's not giving it, it's not submission. That is subjugation. All right, and it is the devil, not God. That's the devil. I like what um, a woman of God said that if you are a woman, you have money, you want to travel to Sicily, and you have booked your ticket, you have your visa, and then you are telling your husband, I'm going uh, to Sicily on Friday, so let's say on Tuesday, and you're telling him, and he said, Ah, Tuesday, no, ah, no, you can't go, please. I, I need to quickly get to, so I need you to be around for. Um, so, so, and so, and so, whatever, you know. And then you say, no, I made up my mind, I'm going. And you go. That's not submission. You understand? That's not submission. Now, another woman says, oh, I, said, I want to go to Sicily. I've already booked on some hotel. I've already picked some place I want to check. And I'm going with some friends. Da, 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 da. I'm going, I want to go on Tuesday. So please, uh, uh, I need you to buy the ticket for me. Like, you're not going anywhere. Just sit down there. And then he said, okay, okay, no problem. I'll sit down. Somebody said, that woman is submissive. No, that woman is not submissive. <laughs> she doesn't have a choice because she, she's not the one controlling the situation. But when you have controlled the situation and out of your own free volition, you decide to say, okay, so that, okay, okay, I'll make that sacrifice for you. You know, so... I'm going to tell my friends I won't be able to join them for that trip. So I'll cancel the ticket or schedule it for another time. You know, and he said, Oh, sweet, I thank you for doing that. That's submission. That's submission. Because you have the capacity to do it by yourself. You don't need him to pay for a ticket, to pay for a hotel, to pay for anything. You can do it. And you still decide to go with what he wants. That's submission. You understand? That's not subjugation. The other one is subjugation. Because that one, the day she has money, she will show him pepe. <laughs> that's 
Now you, you are you to tie me down because you are the one paying for the ticket and all that. You know, that's what we're talking about. It has to be given. And as a woman, even if you are in a situation where your husband is the one that supplies the funds for X, Y, Z, make sure you are giving submission not out of manipulation through funds or whatever. Refuse manipulation. Let him know so that you cannot do this. I will give you submission willingly because it's my choice. And it's my choice as a sacrifice and honor to God also. So don't try to use money or your shouting, you know, to, to force me. No. No. It's important that we understand these tenets. These tenets of divine love. And flow in it. Love has to be intentional. It has to be unending. It has to be unconditional. That's the last thing. Love has to be intentional. You must intentionally love somebody. You have to be unending about it because there's grace to be that. And you have to be unconditional. You can't put conditions around it. Choose to love because you chose to love. God said, I will have mercy on whom I choose to have mercy. So it's not a matter of what the person did or didn't do or what the person is or what is not. I choose. I've chosen that person. I've chosen to show that person mercy. Do the same. Choose to love your spouse. Choose it that I have chosen to love this man. I've chosen to love this woman. It's a choice. It's not a function of who she is, who she's not. What she has done, what she has not done. It's a function of my decision based on my desire to honor my father, to express his will and to live in line with his counsel. I choose to love my wife. End of story. Satan will pack his load and leave. Yeah, he will pack his load and leave. And you'll be in peace. <laughs> so it's time, it's time, it's time. And the Lord will bless your home. The Lord will bless your family. The Lord will bless your union. And those who are having the anniversary this month, it shall be a new season of love. Unending. Love unending. Love unending. And if you're getting tired in your home maybe you're frustrated you're losing the spice ask god i tell you because i've experienced it before when we were very young if you ask god lord to spark up the love between me and my spouse he will you'll be surprised what is it some men sometimes get distracted particularly when they are uh, coming into the middle age you know something they begin to see their wife as hold and she's uh, there and then they begin to look at young 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 uh, uh, faces all around the place no don't do that don't do that. that's stupid that's stupid see when they say beauty is in the eyes of the builder it's true <laughs> i tell you just say god make this woman beautiful again in my eyes there is nothing you ask god for he would do it i'm telling you he would do it beauty is in the eyes of the builder why do you think a young boy will be chasing a 50-something-year-old woman? Beauty is in his eyes. And somebody will say, why are you chasing that old woman? This boy is crazy. This woman is controlling this woman. No, the woman is not controlling the boy. The boy is the one that is seeing something you are not seeing. Yes. The same woman that the man is calling old is the same woman that one small boy is chasing. Look, look, it's in the eyes, it's in the eyes, it's in the eyes. Don't be deceived, it's in the eyes. <laughs> and in case, in case your husband is looking somewhere, tell him to come and listen to me. <laughs> it's in the eyes. There's nothing out there, I'm telling you. Nothing out there. Nothing out there. It's in the eyes. You know, two people are sent to an island where people are not wearing shoes. One called this company, shoe companies, so both of them from two companies. One call is going to say, hey, please, tell con send containers of shoes. Nobody wears shoes here. The other one said, please, send the helicopter back. Come and pick me. Nobody wears shoes here. We can't sell. Can you see? Is what they are seeing. Is the status physically is the same. The people don't have shoes. But what is this one saying? This one is saying that people that don't have shoes, they won't value shoes. Let's go. Please send the helicopter to come and take me out of here. 
The other one said, yeah, there's market, yeah, big, but please, don't send the helicopter, send content, I need to show, push up and start selling. Ah, big market. It's in the eyes. It's in the eyes. It's not the status. It's the eyes. What the eyes is seeing of the status. And God can give you eyes to see beauty again. Again and again. Let us pray. Pray and say, Father, let the love of God grow again and spice up my marital relationship with my spouse that will be like Christ and the church and grow in love in the name of Jesus. Pray that in the Holy Ghost. Ampatoya Nangaru Godufia Pesco Toka Lusiniante. A reader Poscotofia Boraka against the Antongo Luscante Ascofi Pipicataka Uresia Suko da Kania Momosco Verba Piato da Car Godufia Mesconanta Gedestias to Cotofrabai. In Jesus' mighty name we are prayed. Let's just say this quick word. Say in the name of Jesus, the Lord Almighty has filled my heart. With his love. So I walk in love with my spouse. I walk in love with my family members. I walk in love with all that I come in contact with. God is my father. God is love. I am love. And the love of God fills my heart in the name of Jesus. I am patient with all. Kind to all. Because I am love. I am not envious. Jealous selfish because i am love yes i am not arrogant because i'm love i believe the best of all i hope the best for all because i am love i love righteousness i hate wickedness i refuse to be angry according to the flesh because i am love i forgive and i forget all wrongs <clears throat> done against me because i'm love and because I'm love, I am blessed. I have abundance. I live in sound health. I enjoy unusual favor. I have wisdom. I am my household. We live and we do not die. We are secured in the sacred place of the Most High. In the name of Jesus, the spirit power and anointing of the move of God is in my life. I manifest the fullness of of Christ's character, thinking what Jesus would think, saying what Jesus would say, doing what Jesus would do in all situations. I manifest the fullness of Christ's power, healing the sick, raising the dead, casting out devils in the name of Jesus. I manifest the fullness of Christ's wisdom. I do exploits. I provide solutions everywhere I find myself the, by the wisdom of God I manifest the fullness of Christ's presence everywhere I am the presence of God soaks the place sinners have been saved the sick have been healed demons have fled the powers of hell have been seized and the glory of God have covered the earth as water well covers the sea in Jesus name Amen. I declare you blessed today. Blessed to do well. Your home blessed with fresh love, fresh bliss, fresh honey. In the name of Jesus, your eyes shall see beauty in one another for those who are married. And those who are yet to be married, your eyes shall see the beauty that God provides for you. You will be found as a female by the right man. You will find as a male the right female for you. In the name of Jesus, you will not lack your mate. And the glory of God fills your life. Before the end of this year, those who are yet to be in relationship, you are in a good relationship. By the end of this year, in the name of Jesus, a good relationship that will lead to marriage. You are blessed with increase. You are blessed with wisdom. You are blessed with grace. You are blessed to do well. In Jesus' name.
Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. All right, so we come to the end of PhD today. If today's your birthday, I want to pray for you. All right, I think uh, two or three people have mentioned that today's your birthday. So. Join Pastor Paul Alashore every Sunday, 9 a.m., at Elohim's Tabernacle International, Lecky.